Alright guys, my name is Dr. Lisa McFadden, I'm a veterinarian, and you may have seen my amazing videos that I posted yesterday where we tried to autoclave and instapot a regular surgical mask. So today we're actually going to try the same experiment with an N95. Now before anyone worries that I'm hoarding N95, I had an N95 at home uh, because we were doing some remodeling, painting, creating a lot of dust. It was it's months old, so it's not like I have a stash at home. I don't need to like purge my house. Uh, so I, it is very possible because this has been used multiple times that there's questions as to whether or not when it's worn multiple times, if that can affect the porous nature because they're called N95s because 95% of particles that are 0 0.3 micron in size, it protects from it passing through the mask. So this is actually a pretty good experiment because this is a very well-worn N95 and we're going to see what happens when we autoclave it. So there's a couple of parts to today's experiment. We're going to see if we can autoclave this and it doesn't melt and the hospital doesn't burn down. And then we're going to try and instapot it and see if that works. And again, we don't melt the instapot or the hospital or the mask. And we're also going to do some experiments to try and see if the porous nature of the mask is affected. And I am using the best <laughs> low budget options I have by trying food coloring and albuterol. Even though the micron size of albuterol is a lot bigger than 0.3, it's the best we could do. So the whole point of this is to say, okay, can we sterilize these so that they can be used multiple times? Again, masks don't need to be sterile, but we are running really low and no one wants to wear a face mask that somebody else wore. So if we can sterilize them and they're still viable, then maybe we can get more use out of the current supply that we have. This is not gonna answer how many can you put in a package and sterilize it. This is not gonna answer how many times can you sterilize it. This is simply, can you? And hopefully kind of open the door for other people who have actual laboratories and a, and a budget to study it a little bit more. So we are gonna do the autoclave at the same uh, 121 Celsius, 250 degrees Fahrenheit. We're gonna do it for 25 minutes because again, it takes 10 minutes for it to warm up and then it's gonna run for 15 minutes. And then we'll see what it looks like when it's done. All right, moment of truth. Let's see what happened. So, the indicator strip turn, which it should. Uh, and this one has an extra indicator change up here which also turns, and then we'll open the mask. It's nice and warm. So the elastic, or whatever plastic this is made out of, still feels pretty good. It's definitely poofy, <laughs> like pillowy, if you will, but, and this is real hot, so when you take it out, don't touch the metal directly. Uh, this feels okay. This part's pretty poofy. Um, that's the technical term. I don't really, billowy, if you will. And you can still see a little bit of the yellow, but there's no yellow on the inside. So because we're going to be testing whether or not it's still preventing particles from coming in so that you know the autoclave hasn't increased its porous ability. I don't know, what the, it's not more porous. Um, if this is like a little damp because of the humidity from the autoclave, because you know, it's a pressure cooker, then I would let it dry. This feels pretty good because it's been in there for a little bit. So we're gonna try doing the albuterol infused with, well, let's pick blue at this point. And then once we do that, we will try it in the Instapot and see what happens. This was the best I could come up with this morning, very short notice, trying to brainstorm a way to figure out whether or not we maintain that protective barrier uh, after autoclaving and after the Instapot. And as you can see, we're still seeing appointments. This is Tiny. Tiny's getting electroacupuncture, whilst we talk. So this mask we have not yet autoclaved or Instapotted. So my kind of like brainstorming idea, and again, there's a lot of flaw in this, so people can repeat in an actual laboratory environment with like $25,000 equipment, uh, was we are going to nebulize albuterol uh, this is an expired albuterol that I had using salmon seal, which is appropriate given that this is a veterinarian talking about this. So albuterol has a one to five micron size, which is way bigger than 0 0.3, obviously. And 
my thought was I'll put a drop or two of food coloring in and then we'll nebulize for about 15 seconds and then we're gonna let it sit. And so the reason we're gonna nebulize for 15 seconds is so that we ensure that we kind of coat the whole outside. Now, when you wear a mask, you're creating a pressure differential, right? Because you're breathing in and it's not a complete vacuum seal, but it is a slight seal. So I am gonna wear the mask because I had this whole idea of like hooking it up to a vacuum, but then that's kind of like too much pressure and then I would have to create this whole like apparatus and put up the vacuum and seal the color. And because these masks I've had for months and used multiple times for different uh, like aerosolized particles, if you will, at home. I don't know how protective they are now. So I'm gonna wear a surgical mask underneath just cause while I don't mind inhaling albuterol, I'm not really sure how safe it is to inhale food coloring. So I am gonna double mask it. So the double mask is going to potentially interfere with the amount of suction you would normally have when you're breathing behind a mask. But again, this is like MacGyver, Bill Nye, the science guy experiments. So we're doing what we can. So particle size is gonna be larger, pressure differential may not be as big, or I'm, I'm sorry, the pressure differential may not be as great. And then the other question is, uh, my husband and I are actually talking about this, and his question was, well, some of the protective nature may be that the electrostatic uh, forces on the mask itself provide like a hydrophobic barrier. So how effective is it gonna be after autoclaving? That's something that we'll find out. So the reason after we do it for 15 seconds, we're gonna let it sit for up to 30 minutes is to see if we notice any discoloration on the inside or outside and inside of the mask. Because my thought was if you wear the mask all day or for multiple hours, even if, I mean, someone's not gonna sneeze on you hopefully for 15 seconds straight, because that'd be really gross for multiple reasons. But if you have exposure multiple times, if you touch a surface and then you touch the mask, or someone sneezes on you and you don't burn your entire being, then the particles are gonna sit there for a while. So the thought was if it sits for about 30 minutes, then we're gonna know whether or not it can actually penetrate. Okay, so I have three colors, which is convenient because we're gonna do this three different times. So we'll start with yellow. And this way I figured like if the colors mix, we'll be able to tell what, you know, like if we do this with yellow and there's no bleed through, but then we autoclave it and there's bleed through, then we know that it was the autoclave. Uh, and not the actual um, just presence of it sitting. So we're gonna put the albuterol in here. And again, I, I, larger micron size, I have no idea if it being a couple months expired affects the micron size, I don't think so. I also don't know the micron size of food coloring. That, that, looks, that looks like a fine, like scotch color, I guess. It's actually whiskey. So then we're gonna, Hook it up. Actually, let me put the mask on because I feel like this is gonna tip over. So we'll do this mask. And then we'll do this mask. And if I can't see anybody because of the fact that I'm just like fogging myself out. I don't have the bottom one on because I don't want to. All right, let's do, we'll do the smoker. That's not really what this thing's called. This is the mouth attachment. I just call it the smoker because it's, and then, I mean, otherwise we have the turtle mask, but I feel like we use the smoker. Okay. Next time. So 15 seconds is a total arbitrary number that I picked. I feel like, again, it should be fine. And we'll also be able to tell if we get any aerosolization on my glasses. Uh, all right, so let's, you can count off 15 seconds. Go. If there's any coloration on the outside now, Mm -mm. Uh, none that I, maybe like, it's a little jaundice if I look at it very closely. So we're going to leave it for 30 minutes just to see if there's any discoloration over the next 30 minutes. And then, yeah, like, I don't know, Billy Rubin's mildly elevated. Uh, the doctors will find that funny. Everyone else will just think I'm extra nerdy. That's cool. Uh, the doctors will probably think nerdy too. And then we'll come back and see what it looks like in about 30 minutes. Okay, so it's time lapse, so you guys have no idea that it hasn't actually been 30 minutes, but we tried an experiment on paper, and if you hold it in the same place for 15 seconds, you do actually start to see the yellow, which will be really helpful. So we're going to do it again, just like in the center, and I'm going to take extra deep breaths, hopefully it won't pass out. Um, and then that will... Cool. All right. Is he... Can you tell? Is it yellow? All right. Nice. All right. So we're going to try this. We'll see you guys in 30 minutes. So it's been 30 minutes, and I don't know if you can tell because of our high budget lighting that there is less yellow on the outside, no evidence of yellow on the inside. And I should mention that 
I'm repeatedly touching the inside and outside of this mask, which is not recommended for people that are wearing them on a daily basis. Uh, you don't want to contaminate the inside of your mask because that's where your face is going to be the whole time. So now we are going to see if the same experiment holds true for the post autoclave mask. The irony is, is that on the second try in a series of videos about PPE, I put on appropriate eyeglass. I wear PPE because I had a lot of yellow on my face. Um, okay, so all right, so we did it again with the blue just so you could see it better. And we're gonna let this sit for 30 minutes and then we will see if it goes on the inside and then we'll put it in the Instapot. So it's been 30 minutes uh, and the blue is yeah. a little less prominent, but there is no evidence of blue on the inside of the mask. So now we're gonna put it in the Instapot and see what happens. All right, so we let the mask dry because it was a little moist after pulling it out of the Instapot. And then I put the green food coloring in with the albuterol. And this time I actually also added uh, some fluorescein dye. It's what we use to stain eyes to see if there's any scratches. Cause I was wondering if you would be able to see if it fluoresces and see if maybe there's any like sneaky particles that pass through. So in this tube, we have green dye mixed with albuterol mixed with the fluorescein stain. So you can kind of see how it fluoresces a little bit. And then on this mask, I'll close the door. I used the fluorescein laden dye and it fluoresces a little bit. It's not as impressive as I thought it would be, but it definitely has some fluorescing. So we're going to leave it for 30 minutes and then we'll visualize to see if there's any evidence that it went through on the other side with green or if there's any evidence of fluorescein. Now you will notice on the inside, I don't know if you can see it, there's a little bit of yellow right here. This is not from the first yellow that we did because that was up here. This I think is actually from the straps when they sit like this during the autoclave or Instapot procedure. All right, it's been 30 minutes, so, and just to clarify, because I added the fluorescein dye to this one, I did not actually wear the mask this last time because there was a lot of extra things mixed in with the albuterol, so I didn't think it was safe, so I, I held it up, but I actually let it receive the nebulization for a, around five minutes just to make sure we penetrated it deeper. So we're gonna see, we don't see any green on the outside, or I'm sorry, we still see green on the outside, but we do not see any evidence of green on the inside. And now we're gonna take the black light and I don't really see any more, any overt evidence on the outside. And then we don't see anything on the inside except the fibers that are normally glowing. There's an occasional speckle here and here, but my guess is that's more I touched the floor seam stain and then touched the inside of the mask. So, at least from this makeshift experiment, we know that you can autoclave and be able to successfully rewear an N95. You can Instapot and rewear an N95. And at least from my nebulizer, albuterol, food coloring, and fluorescein stain in the end, it was like the Easter egg, uh, fluorescein stain. Those size particles, which are together for albuterol, it's one to five microns. I don't know what the particle size is for uh, food coloring or for fluorescein stain, but it does not appear to penetrate through the mask. So it does appear that the permeability has been sustained and that the mask should still be viable. So my suggestion would be that other people who have actual laboratories who can, in a laboratory setting, actually test to see what particles can and cannot go through would be able to confirm. But from this, it looks like we should be able to successfully and safely reuse the remaining N95s that we have.